，记录时代精神，连接东西方精英翘楚。我是潘磊，这里是英国首都伦敦，欢迎您收看《蕊内人物访谈》节目。本期节目，我们有幸邀请到伦敦帝国学院 James Barrow 教授，和我们谈论有关二十一世纪的医疗创新话题。James Barrow 在伦敦帝国学院担任技术与创新管理教授，也是。学院卫生经济学和政策创新中心的成员，他还是瑞典哈尔姆斯塔德大学创新创业和卡尔贝纳学习中心的客座教授，以及伦敦大学学院巴特利特房地产研究所的名誉教授。詹姆斯教授在英国和外国领导了许多研究项目，他为政府、医疗保健服务以及健康。和建筑行业的公司提供咨询，并且是英国卫生部政策创新和评估研究部门的管理团队成员。他是多个咨询委员会的成员，其中包括 AgeWell 和 Deloitte Healthcare Innovation Observatory。他还是伦敦帝国学院管理教育行政人员健康创新管理计划的联合主任。其最新著作是。医疗保健领域的创新管理。那接下来，我们有幸聆听到 James 教授对二十一世纪创新医疗的热点话题所给予的深度剖析。So the the first question for Professor James: Why is innovation important for healthcare? 创新对医疗保健系统为何重要呢 ？James, please. Thank you, Rene.、Um, uh, well, I think the point I'd like to make is that the way health systems are organised hasn't really changed for centuries,、uh, and by that I mean they're focused on treatment and cure rather than prevention.、Um, they're organised around hospitals、uh, and acute care rather than primary care, and this is a very expensive way of delivering health services.、Um, And on top of that,、um, cost inflation is high in healthcare.、Uh, there are shortages of personnel, such as doctors and nurses.、Uh, in the UK, we have、uh, a shortage of eighty thousand healthcare professionals,、um, and、um, demand is escalating as populations grow older and experience different types of disease、uh, from those traditionally associated with poverty. So we've got the rise of diabetes and heart disease, for example. Affecting many many countries,、um, so innovation,、uh, by which I mean new ways of thinking about how we organise, deliver, and pay for for healthcare, is I think essential if health systems are not going to run out of money in the future. Thank you, thank you for the second question for Professor James. How is the COVID pandemic change our think about the, the healthcare? And how is driven the innovation, please? 二零一九年，冠状病毒疫情大范围流行，如何改变我们对医疗保健的看法，并推动其创新的呢 ？Please. It's it's quite clear that the pandemic has had a huge impact on innovative thinking in、uh, in healthcare around the world.、Uh, obviously, the development of vaccines is one of the great success stories.、Uh, we've also seen the Rapid uptake of telemedicine,、uh, which has been around for many many years, but hasn't really spread. So those are two examples where、uh, innovation has has had a real effect in healthcare. I think there are many other examples as well, though.、Um, some of these range from、uh, repurposing other technologies for new uses,、uh, for example, to create cheaper ventilators. And we've seen a lot of process innovation around the flow of patients in the hospitals, the way that the, the way we organise the、uh, distribution of services within hospitals. Of course, another big area is the construction of new hospital facilities.、Uh, we've seen、uh, hospitals being built in very very short、uh, amounts of time, so that needed a lot of creative thinking.、Uh, I think the big question, though, is. To what extent will the lessons from all this creativity and innovation endure into the future? And I'm referring here, in particular, to the regulatory processes 
for speedily assessing the uh, safety and impact of drugs and devices. So will we go back to the old ways uh, of delays in assessment? Um, delay, you know, we obviously we don't want to compromise safety, but uh, it can take a very long time to get a new drug or medical device authorized for use. So uh, I think we need to be careful we don't slip back into the old, old ways of doing things. Uh, the other thing I think we ought to guard against is uh, going back uh, and and going back towards this sort of uh, cultural attitude, which is against innovation. Healthcare has always suffered from, uh, to some extent, a sort of anti-innovation culture, and there are huge problems with uh, getting good quality, evidence-based technologies adopted into practice because of culture. So I think we need to guard against slipping back into the pre-pandemic ways of doing things. But I think it's undeniable that uh, COVID has made a huge difference in shaking health systems up and showing us how we can do things differently. Thank you. What are the big trend effect of the demand for healthcare, please? 影响医疗保健需求的主要趋势是什么呢? Of course, COVID is a bit of a, a blip. Um, uh, we don't have a pandemic uh, every year. And uh, obviously, of course, pan COVID has been hugely uh, damaging to, to, to people's lives and, and to economies. But we shouldn't forget that the big mega trends which were impacting on demand for healthcare around the world uh, are not going to go away after, after COVID. Uh, and by that, I mean uh, the aging population, uh, which is now something that's affecting societies all around the world, rich countries and poorer countries as well. Uh, obesity, uh, the, the epidemic of obesity and the associated diseases uh, around obesity. Uh, then there are the, 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 the known unknowns, by which I mean the big challenges that we, we know are there, but we don't necessarily know when they will strike and how they will unfold. So of course, pandemics will exist in the future and we need to be prepared for those. We need to be resilient. Uh, antibiotic, antimicrobial resistance is a huge problem that's uh, unfolding over the next 20, 30 years. And uh, climate change, of course, climate change has a big impact on uh, on public health through uh, heat waves, for example, and the spread of uh, um, vector-borne diseases like dengue fever and malaria. So all those big trends are, are there. They, they won't disappear in the next uh, year or two after COVID. So we have to be prepared for those. We have to plan healthcare in a way that it's able, able to cope with those, those trends. So again, I think we need innovative thinking to to deal with all these mega trends. Thank you. The next question is, what is the role of global technology giant in healthcare system? And uh, will their increased role present any danger for society, please? 全球技术巨头在卫生系统中的作用是什么呢? 他们扮演的角色是否会给社会带来任何危险呢? Please. Thank you, Rene. Uh, the big global tech giants, uh, some of which are listed on the slide there, are all becoming involved in healthcare because everybody needs healthcare. Uh, and their billions of users, of course, use, use healthcare as well. So the global market is just, just simply too big for them to ignore. Um, I think the defining characteristic of these companies is that their business models are essentially about data. They're about acquiring and adding value to data, um, creating new services, using data to drive revenue streams. So all those companies on that slide, and, and many, many others as well, see healthcare as, as a key source of data. And um, some of them are becoming involved in healthcare in, in, in a very direct way, others, others less directly. But I think what we're beginning to see is a new healthcare data ecosystem beginning to emerge, which brings together patients, uh, payers and, and, and governments and, and regulators, healthcare providers, 
and then the pharmaceutical and um, medical device companies within this broad sort of uh, healthcare provider um, ecosystem. And data is the glue that binds it all together. And these companies like Amazon, like Google, uh, Microsoft and so on, a part of that ecosystem. Uh, so the ecosystem is emerging and, and, and um, uh, they're all beginning to find their place within the ecosystem, I think. Um, I think one way things might begin to uh, evolve in the future, and I'm not saying this is the only one, that this is just, just, just one possible way, is that we'll move from current models of healthcare on the left of that slide, which are essentially around uh, silos. You have silos made up of care providers, insurance companies, or, or other forms of financing, um, government and regulatory institutions, and then the medical supply chain. Um, but they're all connected through business to business relationships. And we as patients, as consumers, interact with that uh, set of silos in a fairly passive sort of way. Some commentators, some thinkers feel that we're going to move towards a more modular ecosystem made up of different markets, uh, shown on the right hand side of that slide. Uh, markets made up of care providers, diagnostics, therapeutics, uh, the financing side, the back end platforms, data platforms, and so on, and then um, wellness and health management uh, partners in the system. So we will, we will interact with those markets in different ways according to our needs. Now, that's just one view, of course, and I think there are dangers in that view. Um, apart from the concerns around data protection and security and ethics and so on, the model on the right there presents uh, a number of challenges, I think, around um, equity and access to healthcare. So that's one way in which the big global tech giants are beginning to shake up the system, I think. Um, there are dangers. Um, and I think the other thing I would stress is that uh, you, you can't tear up the old system, the old system on the right of that slide, <laughs> and completely replace it with a new one. Uh, things will evolve over time, and, uh, and, and um, uh, that is one, perhaps, one extreme view. So the reality will depend on what the starting point is in a given country. Thank you. Thank you, James. Uh, our next question is, what will those trends mean for patients? Please. Um, I think I'd like to think that if we get it right and we use these technologies in a in, in, in a wise sort of way um, and, and organizational innovations, um, we'll be able to put patients much more centrally within healthcare systems. We've been talking about uh, patient centered healthcare for many, many years, but it's, very been, it's been very hard to deliver. Uh, by patient-centered healthcare, what I'm really referring to is a model where the services come to us. Um, we are at the center and services are integrated, data is shared, uh, it's much more collaborative. Um, we don't interact in a sort of episodic way with the, uh, the healthcare system which is wasteful of our time and expensive because of all the transaction costs and so on. So health systems uh, in, in Europe and, and elsewhere are increasingly trying to think about what a patient-centered healthcare model might, might, might look like. Um, and on the right of that slide, uh, that's essentially what that tries to show. Um, I think the technologies that are coming on stream, particularly the technologies around data analytics and, and, and integration, should make it easier to deliver a genuinely patient-centered, collaborative, integrated healthcare model. But I, I don't want to downplay the host of organizational and um, payment and reimbursement challenges that need to be addressed before we move towards that model. Every health system has tried to go down this road, but it's, it's, it's not easy and uh, it requires a lot of change within existing structures in healthcare systems. Thank you. 
The last question, how far are we from creating the 21st century healthcare system? 我们去创建21世纪医疗保健系统,还有多远的路要走呢? Please. Well, uh, as I said earlier, there's no blank canvas. Uh, all the trends that I've talked about will play out within real life health systems with all their existing institutions and structures and cultures and ways of doing things. So, so you can't just tear up the healthcare system and, and, and start again. I think a lot depends on how the incumbent players in healthcare systems, uh, including policymakers, regulators, existing healthcare providers, insurance companies, and so on, um, how will they respond to the trends that we've just been, been talking about? Uh, will they push back and, and resist? Or will they embrace them and, and collaborate with the global tech giants? So I think in any given country, we will see elements of what I've just talked about, uh, but, but each country will, will develop their own local ways of doing things. Uh, so, so what we see unfolding in the 21st century will really be dependent on um, how existing healthcare systems respond to, to the trends, I think. Um, but but uh, we will certainly see some aspects of, of, of what I've just been describing present in all health systems, I think. Thank you, Professor James, insightful opinion and sharing your time and the knowledge with PVAC Society today. Thank you, Renee. 再次感谢James教授今天做客我们的访谈节目,也欢迎观众们对医疗创新技术方面的疑问,线下和我们理事会交流。欢迎您收看本期的瑞内人物访谈,我们下期再会。